All right, so I wanted to do a quick video talking about different ways of swedging tubing. Now, this is mostly for newer guys because we have a surprising number who join who say that they're learning about doing um, sealed system repair. And this is something that's useful to know how to do. A swedged connection is this. And basically, it is just a piece of tubing that you've expanded the top on. See how it widens out? And it will slip inside of another tubing, and then you can braise that and it's a lot harder to clog and makes to makes a good seal and you're probably you don't do this on every job but it's you do quite a few of them especially if you're moving tubing around in weird ways or if you're connecting to existing tubing i've got three different ways that i do swedged connections probably the most basic is with a swedging chisel now this is just a series of cones and it just goes inside the tube and expands it out you can use it without the clamp, but it gets a little tedious. This is a tubing clamp. Um, if you have a flaring kit, that's all this is, is the clamp from the flaring kit. Now, they make, um, if you're familiar with a, a flaring kit, it's like a piece that clips on top of this, and there's a cone, and it cranks down into the tube, and this holds the tubing. They make a version of that that has swedges, and they're, if I'm not mistaken, it's a they come in multiple sizes. It's not a combo one like this. You need one tip for each individual size. And those are probably even easier to use. I just, I don't have those because I think they take up more space. I've always kind of used these. So first you've got to clamp your tubing into the clamp. It goes by size. And if you really want to crank it down, the chisel works great for that. You get your chisel in the tubing and then you need some kind of hammer and you just hammer it right in now you want to watch because sometimes it'll go a little sideways on you and then um, when I was in school for this they always said to put a drop of oil on and I always forget but the oil makes it easier to get the chisel out And that will have made a pretty decent deep cone that will then slip around another piece. Okay, I'm putting this back in the clamp for this next one because it's a little easier to hold. Uh, the next tool I got to try because I saw it online, it's kind of like a swedging chisel, but it's built into a set of pliers. Um, I wasn't as impressed with this as I thought I was going to be, um, and I'll show you why. So this... You, the idea is you stick it inside the tubing and then expand it. And the difference between this and that chisel is there's a lot less hammering. You got to kind of move it in a circular motion as you do it. Helps if you don't drop it. And what you're doing is you're widening out that tubing. And once you get it wide enough, you can kind of spin it in. And that next size up on the uh, tool, we'll kind of re-round that out, like that. It's a little slower than a chisel if you're used to the chisel, but it does make a swedge. Now, I'm not as big a fan of these because it doesn't make as deep a swedge, or perhaps I'm out of practice on it, which both are entirely possible. Um, I feel like it's just a lot more finicky. I do actually really like this tool for re-rounding tubing. Like if you get a piece of tubing that's a little crushed, this is a lot faster than trying to force this in there. Now, the last one I got is a spin bit. This bit is specially made to fit inside of tubing. And the downside of this is the bit fits one size tubing only. And you use it in a drill. Um, don't use it in, imp in an impact. I've tried. It sometimes works and sometimes it binds, starts impacting, and does terrible things. Now this is fast. And I really do like this, this tool. Now, as you'll notice, I don't know if you saw it, but there's a little smoke coming off. This makes a lot of heat. It's friction based but it makes a nice deep swedge 
and it does so very quickly. Um, this one I got off of Amazon and is kind of a no-name one, but it's worked fairly well. I think I paid like 15 bucks for it, and I was just kind of curious to try it out. There's, I think, an official spin bit, I think is the brand name. And I know they sell like a kit of four that's around $100. This one's just the quarter inch. It's the only size I have for one of these. Uh, if I have to swedge anything bigger, I typically go with one of these. Um, other than these, the other tool that's out there is there's a hydraulic expander that is super nice looking. They do actually make it with a quarter inch bit. The downside is it is like 200 bucks, if not more. And that's more than I'm willing to pay to swedge copper every once in a while. Anyway, hope this helps if you haven't seen some of these tools or if you're not too familiar with swedging stuff. Um, and I, I also think I should mention, this is pretty thin-walled tubing. The thicker wall stuff gets harder to swedge, but is also a little less likely to crack. And there's something about the spin bit with the heat that it generates. First of all, you got to be careful because it's easy to burn yourself. But these are not very prone to cracking tubing, I've found. Um, whenever I do training for someone, I usually have them practice. Just I make a bunch of these little chunks and have them braze them together. And I always end up using the spin bit because I'm brazing out like, or I'm swedging out like 15 or 20 little connectors. And I've yet to crack one with one of these. It's hard to crack one with a chisel, but it's possible. And it's it's easy to get it going sideways in the clamp, or if it if it gets away from you, it can do some weird stuff. So anyway, let me know what you guys use.